Before we get started, I figured I'd make a comment about the mass hysteria that's surrounding the Nano and the Evo Light controller with these sticks. For whatever reason, Autel decided not to include threaded holes on the controller to be able to connect these sticks to while you're in storage mode or while you're traveling. But then I thought to myself, What is up guys, California Phantom here. I thought what better a time than we get a series of three new drones than to run down the best technique, the best method to get an accurate, reliable IMU. Some of you are gonna consider this to be a little bit superstitious, but I've talked to engineers, I've talked to people in the development team across multiple platforms, and this is sound across very detailed logic that I'm not really gonna get into too much, but what I'm gonna recommend for you guys is, and what we're gonna to do today is a cold IMU. The IMU stands for Inertial Measurement Unit, and it's essential for keeping the drone stable and level in the sky. It's a built-in device that measures the force, the angular velocity, and the attitude. It does this through the drone's accelerometer, barometer, gyroscope, and thermometer. By taking them at a absolute value or a coldest value possible, for whatever reasons, whatever technical reasons it may be, it gives you the most accurate results that translates into stable flight. When we're referring to the camera's uh, gimbal calibration and auto calibration, I believe it uses data from, these, from the IMU in its uh, calibration of the gimbal itself. A cold IMU versus a warm IMU or room temperature IMU has its benefits. It's something I've discussed with across engineers, across multiple platforms. It's sort of a universal thing that is very in-depth and very technical. That's not something I, I look to get into. But I will say that if you try it yourself, you try it across drones, you're going to find on whatever platform you're using a quicker sat lock. You're going to find more stable flight. And more importantly, if you're having horizon tilt issues, this sort of protocol or this sort of uh, procedure should help alleviate some of those problems. So the way I do it first is I leave the drone out, not in the freezer, but I leave it out in the cold outside on a very, very cold day, whatever you guys got to work with. So it's cold temperature to the touch. Again, this goal, the goal is not to drown it. Goal is not to leave it out in the rain, but we're just leaving it out in the cold and we're gonna power it up. Um, typically, I like to do, when I do IMUs, I, I like taking off the uh, propellers, but it's more, most important to do this all in one take real quick and um, capitalize on your chilled drone. Making sure that gimbal covers off first before we start it and the propellers. We're gonna give this drone just a second to start. There is no rhyme or reason whether or not you do the IMU indoors versus outdoors. You just wanna make sure you're away from all Wi-Fi interference, all the sort of uh, congested signal areas when you're doing the compass calibration. I like to do those typically in a park or I'm lucky to have a large backyard, I can do it there. Before we started the drone, we made sure the gimbal cover was off the drone. Everything was prepared. The controller was turned on before the drone. The drone powered on obviously with the propellers removed. We're gonna go ahead and get it right into it now and you're gonna to navigate to the safety tab. This may be different from the Nano, but I know for the light series, this is the case. But under the safety tab, we have the IMU calibration. Again, very, very pivotal that you do it right out of the cold, right out of that backyard space or garage, um, and just start, start it right away. I'm picking the most stable surface that I possibly can. I've measured this, I've used a laser level, uh, my island here is, is incredibly level, so I just like using the, the island in, in my particular case. Your case will, will, could be different. Okay, on this one, they're going to want you to open the front legs as shown in the prompt, and you're going to put the drone straight down, straight down on its head. Okay, 
Now it's gonna go straight back, arms folded in. And it really is as simple as that. Your IMU is completed. You wanna do a gimbal calibration. Um, I've heard Autel recommends two gimbal calibrations. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, just open the drone up, navigate to the gimbal calibration area. Gimbal calibration is under the control tab. So we're going over to gimbal calibration and auto calibration. We're just going to give it a few moments to automatically calibrate the gimbal. This will give you the best horizon line possible. Um, I like to do it. Maybe it's my OCD or whatever, but again, I follow the recommendations of some and I do uh, two gimbal calibrations one after another. Okay, first gimbal calibration already completed. So we're going to go to control again tab. Under the gimbal calibration, we're going to do one more auto calibration and we're going to take it outside to see what the results are. All right, we are outside with the Autel Light Plus. We're going to check the results of our IMU calibration. Let's get it. Any of you who've just bought the Autel Light or the Nano or really any new drone, it applies to you. Make sure you're opening those props when you go to take off. Before you take off, you'd like to spread them as much as possible. That puts a little bit less load on the motor over time. It saves you from wear and tear or unnecessary wear and tear, and generally is just a good safe practice. So the Evo Light Plus is connected extra quick to the satellites and everything else. We're good to go. We're gonna check the stability now and verify that the IMU took well. Let's see, we're just gonna Give it some stable flight here. I'm gonna move it a little over so we're centering camera. We're just gonna pause it there. Admire it for a few seconds. Are we raising, lowering, side to side? Absolutely not. This thing is a rock. And that's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like and subscribe. If you haven't already, drop me a comment down below letting me know if you already knew the chilled IMU process. Make sure to just to recap it. We're putting it outside. We're putting it in the garage somewhere cold for at least a couple of hours. You want to do a startup procedure, immediate IMU calibration, and you should be good to go. It should fix those horizon tilt issues and more importantly, make your drone as stable as possible. We will catch you on the next adventure. Me.